Okay, so I wanted to show you all how to join your pinch pots, which is the next step. So first, a couple things. You wanna make sure the wall thickness is even, and it should be the same thickness everywhere, the bottom, the sides, the tops, about the thickness of your own finger. So if you hold up your finger, you can see that it's about the same thickness at the top there. But you're gonna to have to mindfully and carefully kind of feel around your pot. And if there are areas that feel thicker or raised up, you can simply just give it a little bit more of a squeeze. You can also kind of smooth out the inside of the surface. That also um, strengthens the piece and kind of gets it all to the same level, okay? Um, another thing you wanna make sure is that they fit together, that one isn't larger and one isn't smaller. This does not fit yet, okay? Um, so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna stretch this one open a bit and I am just using my thumb and providing more pressure and pushing outward and um, trying to uh, thin that out just a little bit more and even it out. Okay, so you also wanna make sure this rim is nice and sturdy. Let's say it got thin in some places just make sure you can see this, just um, got thin in some places, you can hold it between your two fingers like this and press down, okay? And that's gonna strengthen the rim, also known as the lip of the pot. Okay, now let's see where it is. So if I want it to be bigger, I can stretch this size out more or I can bring this in. I'm gonna show you how to bring this one in. Bringing it in is a bit more challenging, but it's, you can do it. So you're gonna hold your hands like this and pinch the walls, very lightly pinching the walls, and you're gonna kind of just push them together. And I really don't need to do this that much because it wasn't too far off, okay? Um, you can see sometimes it creates some wrinkles, so you can just pinch that a tiny bit um, or compress it by holding it in between your two fingers again and kind of rubbing the wrinkles out. Okay, let's see how it fits now. That is a pretty good fit, okay? Um, so now I'm ready to start putting it together. Since we are making a rattle, you all are going to get um, some ceramic beads and ceramic just means it's been fired one time and what you're going to do is you're going to be putting them in a paper towel so just grab a paper towel from the sink area and wrap them up the kiln gets so hot that that paper completely disintegrates um, you would not even know that it was there um, so it's okay that it's in there the next thing we're gonna do is score the clay or scratch the clay and then add some slip that I have here. So if you have a scoring tool, um, it goes a lot faster, but um, you can totally do it without a scoring tool. For this side, I am gonna show you um, the scoring tool. Okay. And then I am going to put some slip on here. You can use your finger, you can use a, um, a tool to apply this or a paintbrush, a nasty paintbrush. Don't get, you know, don't get a nice one. Um, and I'm just gonna give it a tiny bit more. One thing I didn't really mention too is the consistency of the clay. The clay should definitely be wet but it shouldn't like not be able to maintain its shape completely. Okay, so this is definitely still wet. This one might be a little bit too wet. This one's a kind of a tiny bit better. But um, if the clay is too wet, then it is gonna be really challenging to do this. So you can do this also with a needle tool. What you can see is that I am creating deep lines and thick lines. If you are scratching like this, 
this is definitely not going to stay. Um, reason being is that these are two heavier forms that you are attaching together. So it really needs to have a good connection and scoring and slipping is very important in that process. Okay, I'm trying to go fast. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit of slip, a little bit more. And then just scratch it a tiny bit more, make sure my lines are shown. Okay, so that looks pretty good. This one is looking pretty good. Um, let me switch my hands. When you lay this on top, you are trying to make sure that the walls are touching everywhere. So sometimes you have to kind of push in a little bit or, um, yeah, so go back and forth over the, that area just to make sure that they're sitting on top of each other. Okay, so now that it looks pretty good all the way around, I am going to kind of smush them. I'm not trying to apply a ton of pressure, but almost like wiggling back and forth and just kind of pressing a little bit down on this edge. Okay. And then the last thing, um, well, not the last thing, but the next thing you can do is at that seam, it is nice to have a little coil there um, especially for beginners, just because you in, you can end up like getting a little hole there um, when you're blending, but the coil kind of can help keep it steady. So your coil does not have to be pretty. I've just made many, many coils in my lifetime. Um, can do it pretty quickly and evenly. It doesn't have to really be super even either, okay? And it doesn't have to all be one piece. So like, what I mean by that is you can add a piece and I'm just gonna kind of like push it so it flattens out, kind of like a really thin slab. Okay, and then I'm gonna get some more. Um, you don't have to slip and score this because as you can see, you already have the slip and the scoring lines from where you connected the two pinch pots. Okay, so now that that is all compressed up against that line, all I'm going to be doing is pulling the clay down and pulling the clay up to smooth the surface. You can also use a wooden tool and sometimes the wooden tool is more effective than your hand because it's really pushing on that, um, specifically in that area, like that pressure point. And um, even though like this ugliness about it, this crudeness about the clay, um, that actually will make it stronger. Just like the scoring lines looked really ugly. But realize clay always starts out crude. You have to continue to work on it and work on it to get it where you want it to be. It's a process for sure. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the rest of the time with my fingers. So you can see I'm pulling up and down um, just to make sure that that line is completely covered. I'm trying to go fast here for you. But as you start to get that line disappearing and that coil is kind of completely pushed into there, then you can really start smoothing out the surface um, to make it look nice and clean. In all of mine pieces that I walked around and showed you guys um, started like this, okay? Some of your shapes are gonna be different and you can try to get them as close as you can with your, um, with just by paddling or pinching like I showed in the last video. So your pinch pots, trying to get those to a nice form. Realize you're not gonna get it um, perfect or like close to perfect until you 
get the two forms put together, okay? Because now there's compressed air in here and I can start to do some shaping with it. So mine, let's say I want it to be more humanoid-like. So right now it's pretty flat up here um, and kind of more spherical. So I want it to be a little more narrow here and a little bit more rounded. So I'm just gonna use my hand and kind of pat it. I am not trying to hit this with all my might. You can be working on this as I am demonstrating this process. Okay, if you ever start to see the line or like bumps kind of where you mended the two together, just take your finger and compress over it all this is doing is making the connection stronger. The more you do this, the stronger the connection. Okay. I'm getting close, and I wanna show you guys what that kind of looks like. Okay, it's still very soft. So, um, as it gets harder and harder, I can continue to define the shape more and more. So if I wanted this to even be more pointed, I could kind of take my hands like this and pull it and squeeze it a little bit. Um, if I wanted it to have like a narrow section somewhere, I could kind of choke it or like squeeze it in one section. You can also kind of rub that area to make an indentation and then squeeze it. So really think about your design and what you are trying to accomplish. It's really nice to have either a picture of something you are trying to sculpt or your own sketch in front of you to be able to do that, okay? So that is it for the joining of the two pinch pots. Thanks for watching, can't wait to see what you guys make.